today's just one of those days that I've got a lot of small things that need need attention, just little details that need need some of my time. And I have more of these days than I try to document on camera or anything like that because they just don't typically make a lot of sense, but they happen all the time. So we've got put away all the stuff from the cabinets and clean up the floor in here. I didn't have my vacuum connected to my table saw, so I've got all kinds of fine sawdust right here. So, sawdust. And I've got little things that just need some attention. Things like uh, my heated power washer, I've taken off of the mobile trailer that it was on. I no longer see a need for moving that around at location to location. Now that the shop's here and steady, I think this will stay up here. And I've got water up here now so I can hook this up and I can power wash out front, things like that. So I think what I'm gonna do with that, I'm gonna mount some, uh, some casters underneath it so that I can just roll it around and that way I can roll it to the wall out of the way and then I can roll it up to the door and hook up a hose and use it. So I need to get, Mount the casters on the washer. I need to tidy up over here where I had the materials, my saw horses. That way I've got the bay back in here opened up and prepared. Got to get a couple of our vehicles in here. One of the trucks needs to come in and get a detail so we can get it sold. I've got another one that we need to get in here and get some Repair work done. I think every single one of them is due for a service or, or just about due for a service again. So I need to burn through some stuff in the shop and get some mechanical. So I've got to prepare for that. And I've got to get outside and do a bunch of work out there too. The snow blower is coming off. I'm gonna leave it here next to the shop. I'm pretty sure we may be done with it for the year. Got another little storm coming up, but who knows? So that's gonna come off and the loader get mounted. We filled up our gasoline fuel tank the other day and it's still sitting here in the back of the farm truck because I didn't wanna to have to take the snow blower off with the storms. And now that it's been, I don't know, 10 days since we did that, I can get the loader on and get that unloaded and situated. So all these little tedious things kinda of fall by the wayside when I've got to stay busy on a project and get the project wrapped up. So now I'll spend a day or two probably going through all these little things and getting things prepared for the next bit of project that needs to happen.
Oh, the old girl's got some drips and leaks and stuff. Gonna have to address. Okay. Well, it looks like we'll get the chains washed and taken off. Put away. And we may end up taking the loader right back off. Got a few things here to fix main pressure side out of the pump returning to the tractor on the hydraulic system's got a the steel line there's got it looks like something impacted and it's leaking my steering orgle's got some leaks there still so need to wash everything clean it and Get tire chains off, and it's gonna need a day in the shop. Your potion's gonna be a metropolitan number. The young man asked, of course. His eyes are in the room, makes him bold. Yes, brother. Would you like to tell us what is true? Well, I think it's better than the others. I don't know, but you know, brother, you please ask. The young man looks like that, but it's on to you. They said you really want to wait. You don't have to do that. They can't tell us that they've lost years. But then did she allow herself to succumb to their hurtful words? They hurt her enough with their actions. Still, sometimes she really has to... Before I finish cleaning everything up, I'm gonna make one last little thing. <laughs> the bandsaw we bought at the auction a couple years ago, we used it very little until now that we finally have a good space for it. So I bought some new blades for it, new tires for the drive wheels. So everything's really, really good shape. But it, you can see, it doesn't have any kind of like fence or front fence guides or anything like that. I'm sure I can probably get them. But for now, 
what I'm going to do while I've got some pieces and some scraps and some things that are going to work and I still have everything out in a mess a little bit. I'm going to quickly make a sled for that tabletop. Um, that's going to help with resawing right now so that we can uh, be able to use that effectively for now until I can get a fence and f spend the time to locate the pieces that it's going to take to get a legitimate fence and fence rails and everything like that installed on there. I'm going to use a chunk of this melamine. I've got plenty of pieces so I'm going to cut a little bit of a fence to stand here and I'll back brace it with a couple pieces and just screw this together and I'm going to use this scrap of dug fur and I'm going to cut a three-quarter inch uh, strip that will fit the groove for the channel. Um, that will get glued and screwed onto the underside of this. And then I can pass it through there right against the saw blade. And that will give me a clear edge here. And I'll just make sure that this fence is square to that edge really good. And it's going to work really well for now. <laughs> that way I can take any of our log material that we're going to cut down into anything. I can lay it into this saddle, into the the back fence on this sled, and I can cut the ends and get nice square ends. I can then lay that log against the fence, with the end against that fence, and position it here so that I can run it through the blade to rip a flat, and then be able to roll that flat to the flattened here and pass it through making cuts for rip cuts. Um, we don't have any big, big plans for like resawing large boards and lumber, but we have little things that we want that we need some thinner, smaller material for. And this will work out great. It may have seemed a little bit strange to take time to build a crosscut sled for that bandsaw right now. It wasn't anywhere on my to-do list today, and some might argue that that's me allowing myself to get distracted. But in my mind, it's a matter of capitalizing on efficiency. All of the necessary tools to make that sled were out and ready, as well as the materials needed. I already had a pile of sawdust that I needed to sweep up, and so it just seemed like it was the perfect time. Doing it now took no additional time to set up the tools, no additional time to chase out the materials, and no additional time really in the cleanup. This is one of those little things that I would have had to build anyway, and it would have likely happened when I was finally ready to resaw some smaller boards for a particular project, taking additional time out of that project so that I could round up the tools and materials, get it set up, and build that sled. So for me, it was 15 additional minutes well spent. I think next time I will not forget to hook the vacuum up to the bandsaw or the table saw. The lathe isn't so bad because it all kind of stays in one space. Man, that was a lot of dust everywhere. So we'll get those on the vacuum next time. Uh, next point of order, I guess, I'm gonna go ahead and get this jacked up. I need to put some casters on there. I've got some that I picked up that are swivel casters. Um, they're plenty heavy for the, for the weight and they're simple, but I don't want to just weld them on because I don't know, there's nothing worse than having it welded. And then if a caster fails over time, you got to cut it off and re-weld it. I'd rather just bolt it on. And... So I'm going to jack up one side and high enough I can drill through, mark and drill through the bottom and get, get two bolted on. Then I'll jack up the other side and do the same thing, get it drilled through and bolted on. That way I can move this thing real easy. It's plenty heavy. I have no idea how much it weighs. A lot, it's heavy. <laughs> so I think these are 300 pound rated, no, 200 pound rated each. So that's like 800 pounds capacity, but they're small enough that it won't be way high 
and full swivel will let me just move it around the shop and on the concrete anywhere I need to. So I'll get the swivels on and then I'll probably bring it out here by where the lathe is and move some things around and get it out here and wash off the tires and chains um, and the couple of spots that are leaking and then bring the tractor in probably. So right there, there's just a slight pinhole right in the very apex of that end end. I don't know what I hit somewhere along the way. There must have been something that I hit underneath there. And it could have been, I don't know, it could have been a year ago. It could have been three years ago. And it finally wore through, wore out. And that's created a pinhole leak and it's just, if I sit there long enough, it makes a little puddle like so. And I noticed I was cavitating a little bit when I ran the hydraulics. So I knew I had something going on. This comes directly out of the hydraulic pump and sends out to the entire system. So this is the main pressure side out of the pump. So this, anytime the tractor's running, that's bleeding out. So we're gonna raise that up.
the last time or two that I used the tractor, I noticed that it did have a little bit of a drip of hydraulic oil coming from somewhere, and I could see that the steering orbital was leaking down the side of the transmission. I did not expect to find that this main pressure line had a hole in it. I was glad I found it and was able to get that fixed before the day was run out. So the next day, I went ahead and fixed the steering lines while Ola went ahead and stained the stairs. I showed most of that work in the stair staining video, but all I needed to do for that repair was to replace all of the O-rings on the flat-faced steel line fittings that go in and out of the steering orbital. Then we washed the Silverado and brought it in, and Everest got started vacuuming and cleaning out the interior, getting it ready so that I could go through and do a final detail on the truck. We then proceeded to spend the next two to three days in the middle of kidding season before I was able to come back and get onto this truck, getting the last of the detail work done. This has been a good truck, and we bought it originally looking to replace Ola's car so that she had something with high ground clearance and four-wheel drive to drive up and down this main road getting home since we've moved up here. Shortly after we bought the truck, Ola wasn't sure she was quite ready to give up her car, so we kind of rode along with both of them for a little while. And then Ola ended up accidentally buying a 2003 diesel pickup on an auction that she was supposed to just be watching. But we'll have more on that truck in the next video, since it'll be the next one to come into the shop. So ultimately, we've decided we have way too many vehicles, and we don't need this Silverado or her car. Her little car made a lot of sense for us in the past, but it just doesn't make sense to keep it up here off-grid. It's a hybrid electric car, and quite frankly, it has twice the size of battery as our entire solar system. So it just doesn't make sense to try to charge it up here. So soon that car will come in and get the same kind of treatment. However, it's fully paid for, so the only thing we stand to gain is the asset value back as cash flow for some of these projects. Whereas this truck has an equity and a payment. So it made a lot more sense to focus on selling this truck first to eliminate that payment and free up the cash flow. We'll also have the equity when it sells, and that will all be able to go towards funding these projects that we need to complete up here on the ranch. So the last step that I wanted to do before we sell the truck was to replace the bug shield. It originally had one on here when we bought the truck, but with the cold weather and the tree limbs and such, it cracked and broke. And I took it off because I didn't want it to rattle and damage the paint on the hood. So it gets a new one, and with a little luck, it'll make its way to a new home real soon.